Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. We're headed down to Tombstone today to get some footage for this week's episode, so let's head out. Guys, you don't have to do that. There's enough room in the car for everyone. So we went down to Tombstone to do some filming for future videos and thought about how haunted that darn town is. I mean, you may not believe in the paranormal and that's okay. But there's nothing that makes you wonder more than a touch, or a whisper, or even a sighting that you can't explain. <laughs> you know what? Let's investigate. The Birdcage Theater, built in 1881, seems to have a few ghosts. Not surprising since over the years over 20 people have died in it. One ghost is a man in striped pants with a clipboard. He walks from stage left to right, then disappears into the walls. He's not the only one tourists see. Cowboys and prostitutes show up from time to time, as well as phantom voices and the scent of cigar smoke. Over the years, paranormal investigators have recorded other experiences in there as well. Yeah, pretty haunted, I'd say. The Buford House, built in 1880, has had a sad history. Three of the original owner's seven children died in it. Today, guests hear children's voices and get touched by hands that aren't there. Other historic buildings turned into hotels like the San Jose House, the Tombstone Bordello, and the Tombstone Boarding House have their own restless spirits that make themselves known to their guests. Of course, the OK Corral is haunted, but not necessarily by Billy Clanton and the McClory brothers. In 1897, another gunfight occurred there, and a man named Justice Jim Burnett was gunned down. His spirit is said to show up briefly from time to time as a thin old man with a beard wearing a flat-brimmed hat. As far as saloons go, Big Nose Kate's, which used to be the Grand Hotel, has a resident spirit of a swamper who lived in the basement. Swampers were responsible for cleaning up the establishments, sweeping and mopping the floors, that kind of thing. This fella actually burrowed a shaft in his room to connect to the famous Good Enough Mine so he could extract some silver in the off hours. Hmm. Pretty smart. I can handle things! I'm smart! Not like everybody says! Paranormal investigators looked into many of Tombstone's haunts and were able to debunk a few of them. For instance, Campbell and Hatch's saloon, where Morgan Earp was killed, got reports of footsteps and apparitions of men and women. And the investigators found that the acoustics in the building amplify the sounds of people walking on the boardwalk outside, and many of the apparitions were reflections of camera flashes off of shiny objects. The Crystal Palace Saloon got a similar debunking. With the amount of booze being imbibed in there, I imagine a lot of people are seeing things. I personally have not had a paranormal experience in Tombstone, but a former ghostwriter has. Charles Longfellow waited for Allen Street to clear up so he could get the composition he was looking for. This is what appeared on his digital camera after. Battlefields have incredible ghost stories, and apparently so do Old West Towns. So on this Halloween day, I hope that you and your family have a wonderful holiday, and if you happen to be visited by the ghost of Bill Brazelton, just give him some candy and he'll go away. And I'll find the wrappers in my house tomorrow morning. So, yeah. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the train.